I'd like to share four ways that you can use your Chromebook for learning. In this video, I'll be sharing two of the four ways, large group or whole class instruction and small group projects. Now, it is actually very difficult to engage every student in your classroom at the same time. Large group collaboration is the idea of creating an activity that does just that. Now, most commonly, large group um, assignments or whole class activities revolve around lecture. And right now, lecture has a bad connotation, but lecture does not necessarily need to be a passive activity. We'll get into some ways you can make it an active, engaging activity here in just a minute. Now, some of the key elements of large group collaboration, it does assume that every student has a device. So this is going to be ideal for uh, teachers who are in a one-to-one -one school program or have the ability to get a Chromebook cart and pull that into their classroom so that every student has a device. This is a teacher-guided activity. Every student is going to be doing the same thing paced and organized by the student. Large group collaboration frequently involves the collection of class data that the teacher can then analyze and look at to plan future lessons. Now there are quite a few tools that support whole class large group collaboration. Uh, Nearpod, Pear Deck, Kahoot are um, some very popular ones. Um, Kahoot is a very fun kind of quiz game show um, thing. It's great for review games where you're presenting questions to students and every student is able to answer that question and see their um, results in real time. Nearpod and Pear Deck are very similar tools. Um, Pear Deck is my personal favorite. Uh, Pear Deck is a presentation tool. You, the teacher, will create a lesson. You can use Use Google uh, Slides or PowerPoint. You will convert that uh, slide presentation into a Pear Deck presentation. I like to use the Pear Deck add-on for Google Slides and present that to your class. Your students are able to join that session live, so they're joined on their device, and you're able to push content directly to their screen, so you can show them your PowerPoint slides, but you can also ask them questions. You can do drawing, you can do multiple choice, free response, um, dragging activities. It's really, really a great tool. Nearpod is very similar to Pear Deck. Um, I would say that Nearpod is ideal if you have iPads in your classroom. Pear Deck is ideal if you're using Chromebooks in your classroom. And then certainly you can always use Google Drive for whole class activities um, because of the real-time collaboration of sheets and docs and slides. Here's some ideas for uh, creating a large group project for your class. Um, you can write a class story. I did this with my ninth grade students um, when Google Docs was a, a very new thing. It was quite fun. Um, if you're a science teacher, you can compile lab data using Google Sheets. We talked about direct instruction or lecture using Pear Deck and Nearpod. You can take notes collaboratively as a class. You can use Google Forms for a class poll or do a review game with Kahoot or perhaps Quizlet. My book, The Chromebook Classroom, has a lot of examples of these different activities with templates and instructions on how to set them up. If you're interested in learning more, you can head over to my website, chrmbook.com slash book, and you'll be able to uh, take a look and pick up a copy if you wish. There's lots of connections uh, to the Common Core and NextGen Science Standards related to large group collaboration. Um, a lot of these focus on the collaborative access um, and aspect of these projects. So, you know, Common Core, things like planning, revising, editing, using technology to collaborate with others, analyzing and interpreting data um, are some of the standards that are emphasized uh, through these um, national standards and are um, met by doing a large group activity. Let's move on to idea number two. We'll talk about small group projects for a little bit. Now, most people have a pretty strong opinion about small groups. You either love them or hate them. The big complaint about small group projects is that not everyone contributes. One person tends to do the bulk of the work. That's something to be aware of, and it's important that you structure your small group activity effectively to make sure that everyone has a clearly defined role. Now, small group projects are ideal if you don't have enough Chromebooks for every single student. So at minimum, you'll need one device per group. Um, I recommend a group of three to five. Three is optimal. Five can be a little bit challenging uh, depending on the topic. Um, 
you need to provide the group with a key question to investigate. Typically, this will involve some kind of research and they need to create something to showcase their learning, their research. Um, there are a variety of different things that they can create. This um, can be as short as a single class period or as long as a multi-day, multi-week project. It's going to require a lot of teamwork and collaboration from the uh, members of the group. Now, there's lots of different ways uh, that you can do this. I like to do multimedia assignments in small groups. So um, some of my favorites include Google Sites, where instead of doing maybe a traditional poster project or a PowerPoint presentation, I will have my students create a website highlighting their research. I used to do this when I taught um, ecology to my biology students. Every group would create a website about a different ecosystem. You could also turn that into a video. Adobe Spark is a marvelous, simple video tool that you can use to create short video projects. You could do that in as little as one or two class periods. For more complex complex, longer video projects, I recommend WeVideo or Powtoon. Um, to do some kind of uh, untraditional things, you can look at Google Tour Builder and create a, um, a tour of the earth. That's great for history assignments and geography assignments. And then certainly the entire Google Drive suite of tools, docs, slides, sheets, forms, drawing are outstanding. Podcasting has also become a uh, very popular thing to do and Soundtrap is uh, a tool that you can use to create audio recordings. Here's some different ideas. We kind of talked about some of these. Again, a lot of these are going to focus on research um, activities. You may want to ask your students to compile some uh, research or to collect some data using Google Forms, which they can then present in an infographic, uh, for example. Videos, um, podcasts, songs are great ideas as well. Several examples of this in my book. Um, one of my Personal favorites is the math and science infographics that's on page 135. That's great for um, math teachers and science teachers who have a lot of data and students are going to collect that data and then create a visual illustration of that data and explain what it means. It gets into that synthesis analysis, um, higher order thinking um, questions. Common Core and Next Gen Science Standards uh, connect with small group projects as well. Again, um, looking at uh, Common Core math, you know, using data from a sample survey, integrating visuals into information like charts and graphs, sharing a research and writing project, and supporting your um, explanation with evidence are all things that are are emphasized in these standards and would be easily met through a small group project like this. So those are two ways that you can use your Chromebooks in the classroom, whole class or large group assignments guided by the teacher, and then small group projects that allow students to express themselves creatively. This is the part one of two. You can look for part two linked in the description for this video for two more ways to use Chromebooks in your classroom.